Chopping feral kittens that you hope to tame for adoption can be very stressful and frustrating when it goes wrong. I'd like to share with you the strategy that we use at Urban Cat League. We've used it for over 20 years and it's helped us enormously to leave the kittens with mom as long as possible, but then trap them at that moment before that window of time closes where you can still do a very efficient and quick taming socialization. If you wait too long, it becomes a very prolonged and drawn out and more difficult process. Oh, you may want to watch our Taming Feral Kitten video. We have a new one out, updated from our one from 20 years ago. The one from 20 years ago was watched by over a million people on various platforms. So we hope you'll enjoy the new one. But this video goes with it to help you without a lot of fancy equipment to very efficiently trap feral kittens and get them in and ready for socialization. You want the first experience with humans to be one that's at least expedient and somewhat calm. You don't want to be chasing down kittens, grabbing them, throwing them into carriers. You might get bitten and scratched. But worst of all, when you go to tame those kittens, they're, they're terrified of you. Um, if you trap them, they don't quite know what happened. Then you can start nurturing them, feeding them, and they'll be more relaxed and they won't necessarily be holding you responsible for the traumatic experience of getting trapped. Being born outdoors does not make kittens feral. Feral is a fractious behavior. If the kittens are trusting enough to come right up to you and allow you to calmly pick them up, you can probably safely get them into a carrier and confine them without the carefully laid out trapping sequence that we're going to share. But if they are frightened and they're running away and they have a very feral mother, you would want to separate them from her as soon as possible before she ingrains her fear of humans into them any more strongly than it already is. And trapping is the safest and most efficient way to do that. This trapping strategy we're going to share will help you with kittens of any age from six weeks to two, three, four months old. In fact, it'll even help you with trapping adult cats. But we're going to start with uh, talking about what you'll be seeing at around six weeks because six weeks is when a mom is the most protective and she might hamper your trapping. And also because at six weeks, this is when the kittens will be the easiest and uh, most successfully tamed. If you have questions about the ideal time to separate the kittens from mom for a socialization, or if you're going to be trapping kittens that are older, say uh, up to three and even four months old, you probably would uh, get a lot out of our YouTube channel, Urban Cat League presentation of Taming Feral Kittens. It's a much longer in-depth uh, examination of the subject and in much greater detail than we are going into in this uh, trapping presentation. With the right strategy, the trapping will go very quickly when you start, but you want to make sure that you gather all the right info before you do any trapping. If you're doing this in anticipation of kittens that you know are going to appear, if you happen to know the day that mom got skinny or she gave birth, about six weeks to the day, the first kitten will appear following mom to the feeding station. Uh, they won't all come out the first day, and the first ones that come will probably not be the smartest. They'll probably be the boys. But over two, three, four days, you'll see kittens appearing one after the other. It's a good time to get a head count and see, oh, there are two black ones. No, there are three black ones. Get the colors, the markings. The last ones that will probably come will be female. They're probably the smartest ones. They have a little higher ingrained level of fight or flight at that point than the others maybe. And you want to make sure you identify which ones those are. Because in the video coming up, we're going to show you how you're going to be in complete control using a selective trapping technique uh, to decide who gets trapped first. And you're going to want to trap those shyest kittens before you trap any of the braver kittens because they'll come back. This is the key point to this trapping strategy. You don't want to fall into a situation where the shyest ones have run back to the den. You've trapped all the brave ones and you spend days trying to coax those shy ones out of the den and into a trap. The biggest thing that slows down a trapping project is the cats are afraid of the trap. They suddenly see this trap arrive. They go around it and around it. They see the food inside, but they're afraid of going in. Uh, mom doesn't want the kittens to go inside. And then the shy kittens are watching from a distance. And then they suddenly see one of the braver kittens trapped. And they go, I knew no one should have ever gone in there. They run back to the den and then they won't come out for days. Well, here's how you can solve that. You're going to feed from the trap. Before you trap any cats, 
you're going to make sure that every cat has a good experience going in and out of the trap. So if they witness another cat being trapped, uh, they're not going to be afraid to come back. So you open the door, open it to the top, and you're going to thread a cable tie through the roof, connecting the roof to the trap door. So you, you zip, zip the tie, and no cat will get trapped by mistake while you're training them to enjoy going in and out of the trap. Then you also want to take off the guillotine door so that you have a through way through. The cats think they there's no way they're going to get trapped. They learn to be comfortable going in and out of there. You've got a big bowl of food in the middle, enough for all the cats to come and go so that there's plenty of food. You might have to even refill it if the shy ones haven't gone in and the other cats have eaten all the food. You might have to add more. Make sure they have water also, but I wouldn't put that in the trap because it can make a mess. You don't want to have food outside anywhere else. You want to make sure they all have to get enough courage to go in there to eat. Put the trap out where you've decided it is the best place to do the trapping. The place where they regularly get the food. Uh, one day they're going to come to get their food and they're going to see that their food is inside this trap. The trap has both doors open and they will now quickly, hopefully, learn to go in there. And when you've seen that the shyest kittens are going in there, you've seen them go in and eat a couple of times and they're more relaxed about it, you're going to take the guillotine door, you're going to put it back on the trap, but before you do that, you're going to move that bowl all the way to the end. Actually, you might want to move it halfway, and then the next day move it a little farther. But pretty soon it's going to be all the way at the end of the trap with the guillotine door closed. And you still have your cable tie on, but they have to run the gauntlet. To get to the food, they've got to go all the way to the back of the trap. And then, uh, spoiler alert, we're going to teach you a selective trapping technique so that you have total control over who gets trapped and when. It involves a bottle of a string. This isn't here for any purpose. The cable tie is still holding the door open just so they get used to seeing it and nothing has changed the day you want to start trapping. You want to make sure everything, they're used to it so you can get those shy kittens first and the other ones will be confident to come back. One really good thing about this training, not to be afraid of the trap, is they will have been eating every day up until the moment that they get trapped. The withholding food technique where you just don't feed cats and you just start trapping them, some of the cats may be the last one trapped. They haven't eaten for two or three days. And so if it happens to be an adult cat and it's mom and she doesn't go into the trap for three days not having eaten, she's going the next day to space surgery, very undernourished for the last three days. This way, if she's going in and out of the trap every day and eating, and then one day you trap her and spay her the next, she goes in for her space surgery very healthy, having eaten every day. You can also do the training uh, not to be afraid of the trap with the drop trap. Uh, if you have access to one, but unlike the one in the picture here, which is actually set for trapping, you want to put, um, I've used a cinder block, put a cinder block underneath, release the peg so that nobody gets trapped by mistake. At Urban Cat League, we never charge for workshops or any of our services. If you find the information helpful, we hope you'll donate. There's information at the very end of the video on how to do that. You may already have uh, two, three, four month old kittens running around and they aren't that closely attached to mom and she's not going to be that protective. But if the kittens you're uh, going to trap are six, seven, eight weeks old, you're going to need to trap mom first because if you trap one or two kittens and you haven't got mom, even if you get one kitten, she's going to go, well, we can't live here anymore. She's going to move the litter and you may not know where they are. And those kittens that she moves are probably the shyer and smarter ones. And the longer it takes for you to find them and trap them and start the taming process, the more difficult it's going to be. So with a plan like this, you'll get everybody, you'll be in control, and then you can move forward. So once everybody's comfortable going in and out of that trap, you find out, okay, how are we going to get mom spayed? Make an appointment, and the day before her appointment to get spayed, you're going to trap her first. Hear me out. There's a whole sequence to this. It's very methodical. It's avoid all the pitfalls. She comes out in the afternoon. Kittens don't usually come out until dusk, but she gets hungry. They're asleep in the nest. She comes out in the afternoon. When you've got a count, you know what you're dealing with. You can trap her first, put her trap in the bathtub or the cool garage somewhere that's uh, safe and she's not going to be overheated or too cold. Cover the trap with a trap cover so she's calm and she's out of the mix.
In the very next slide, we're going to talk about selective trapping techniques. You probably won't need to use any of those techniques to trap mom. She'll probably just go right into a trap set with the trip plate. But if you have other cats in the area and you want to just make sure you only get her, you can look at those techniques that are coming up. But mom is going to have to go to the vet in a trap. Most vets insist that a feral cat come to them for spay in a trap. Hopefully have maybe two traps so that once she's put aside and she's in safekeeping waiting for her vet appointment, you have a second trap so you can start trapping the kittens. There's a lot more uh, that we could share to give justice to a mother cat and her spay coming off lactating. So we put that in a completely different video, uh, Mother Cats and TNR. So you can look for that on our YouTube channel. Also for information about setting up the kittens when they first come off the street, when you're getting them ready for socialization. I call it the cooling off period. There's a lot of info about that, which we uh, won't go into in just this trapping strategy video. We cover all of that in great detail in our Taming Feral Kittens and Cats video. Now that it's time to start trapping the kittens, they're all ready and prepared to go into the trap, even the shy ones. We're going to go over the various selective trapping techniques. What they all have in common is you are in control of when the door goes down. You're not going to set the trap conventionally with the trip plate up, which requires a cat to go in, step on the plate, and the door is released, and then they're trapped. The reason we only use selective trapping when trapping kittens is because if you set the trap in the conventional way, uh, you could have a kitten just about to step on the trip plate and another one is in behind and another one's just about to go under the door. And the trip plate could go off at any point and that's a big opportunity for everything to go wrong. It's a recipe for disaster because if one gets frightened, hopefully nobody gets injured, but if one just gets frightened and goes back to the nest, they can hide for days, which is why you want to get the shy ones first because those brave ones, as we've said, they'll come right back. Now I'm going to go through each one of the selective trapping techniques one by one and explain the various quirks and tips for using each one of them. The first one is the classic bottle and string. It's just a string tied around the neck at the top of a bottle and you place it under the corner of the door. You release the door and just put the bottle under the corner. You do not set the trip plate mechanism, the uh, normal way of setting the trap at all. You stretch the uh, string back and tie it off on something so that it's relatively taut and not laying down on the ground. If you have it laying on the ground, by the time you pull that string up to be taut, any cat in the trap will see that. And if they're suspicious, they'll just go running out before you can even get the string much up off the ground. And also you see it's tied at the top. If you tie it at the bottom, it's less visible to the cats, but it makes a noise. When you pull from the bottom, it'll slide on the sidewalk or the driveway or anything like that. Whereas if you tie it off at the top, it's very quick and silent when you pull it. Uh, you can put some water in it for some weight if you want. That can help. Or you can keep it light, but you test, you know, what, what works best. I like to tie it off on a tree limb or a fence or a doorknob or something. If the cats are trusting enough, you can just stand there a few feet away uh, if the kittens are willing to go in there with you there. I would suggest that you try these things out, each one of these trapping techniques. Try it in a garage or in your living room or somewhere. They're kind of noisy. Once you get out in the field and you're ready to start trapping, you want to be pulling the string and making that noise of the door coming down as few times as possible. Here's a picture of a better orientation for the bottle and the string. Presumably you're out here in the front of the picture and you can see the trap at a right angle. So you can see the door in profile and you're pulling the bottle toward you. Um, you'll be able to see if you're trapping two or three kittens at a time, you can see that all three kittens are in away from the door so the door's not going to come down and hit anybody. I uh, just put a big bowl of food and usually the first kitten will go in and just keep eating and you'll get another second, third, sometimes even a fourth to come in behind them around a big bowl of food at the far end of the trap. Let the brave kittens come and go several times if necessary. Wait until those shy ones are in there and trap them first. If the brave kittens are outside and they see the shy kittens trap, they'll say, oh boy, that's tough luck. I've been in and out of there five times. Nothing ever happened to me. Oh, and when's the next serving? I am exaggerating a little bit. Of course, they will run and hide when the trap goes down and they may not come right back, especially if they've already eaten a full bowl of food. But trust me, the next day when they're hungry, they'll be right back to go in and waiting one day for them 
to get their nerve up is much easier than waiting four or five, six days for those shy ones to get the nerve to come back. So next we have a video showing the second uh, trapping technique using a nail and a key ring. I came up with this. I had a trap that was broken. The chip plate was completely broken and I didn't have a bottle handy. I found a nail and a key ring and I found a way to release the door from a distance with the string. So here's a demo of the Urban Cat League nail and key ring trapping technique. It's just a nail tied onto a string and the key ring is threaded through the grill of the diagonal door at the front of the trap. And you place it to one side or the other so the nail can be as close to one side or the other. And what we're gonna do is when we release the door, we'll be able to easily thread the key ring up through the roof to thread the nail through. I'm gonna show you how we do that. Okay, so you're gonna release the spring on the spring-loaded door, raise the roof all the way to the top, push that key ring through the roof, and grab your nail. Now you're gonna carefully thread the nail through the top and gradually release the door so the weight of the door is held only by the nail across the bars on the top, which is threaded through the key ring. Let's get a closer look at that. You can see that the only thing keeping that door open is that nail, which is threaded through the key ring. And if you pull that nail out, the door would come right down. So you put a big bowl of food in the back of your trap, let all the cats that you want come and go and come and go. And when the one that you want is in the trap, you pull the string and voila, you have your cat. Here's the drop trap, which is great for selective trapping. You can sometimes get an entire litter of kittens uh, pulling the string once in one trap. But if you're going to use this, make sure you watch several videos on techniques of how to use it. There are a lot of tricks and some glitches that can happen. You'll see there's a sliding door, a guillotine door on the left side. When the trap goes down, you can line up a trap or a transfer cage and then you have to offload the kittens or out of the box trap. That makes me a little uneasy. You see there's no bottom on the trap, so you always have to make sure you're trapping on level ground and that you come immediately and put a weight on top of it so nobody can get out under underneath. Not such a problem with kittens, but with an adult cat, if they can get a paw underneath, they can sometimes escape after the trap has dropped. Community Cats podcast has an excellent video on uh, all the ins and outs of drop trapping. I think you find that very helpful. However, if you don't have access to a drop trap, I really think you can do a very efficient trapping uh, using a box trap with either the bottle and string or the uh, nail and the key ring. And you can uh, confine the kittens in a very efficient way that is conducive to uh, socialization. This trapping sequence we're watching is an instance where no training to not be afraid of the trap was done. They just started the trapping. These two guys came right out um, under the trap, hoping that the third shy girl on the side would come in and go under and get three cats. She had never been under the trap. She's seeing this for the first time. So uh, she was very reticent. Unfortunately, they thought, well, let's just get the first two and see what happens. She ran back to the nest and didn't come out for days. Let's look at some solutions to some of the most common problems and mistakes when trapping goes wrong. It might be that you either didn't get that last kitten and you're trying to draw them out or you didn't get mom out of the mix. Um, there's a couple of things I hope they'll be helpful. Here's something to try as a fix when you didn't get that shy kitten and they run back to the nest and won't come back. You can put one of the other kittens that you have already trapped, hopefully one of the confident ones so it won't be too stressful on them and put them all the way to the back of the drop trap in a squirrel trap or a kitten trap, reset the peg, and hopefully the kitten will make enough noise and the other one will hear it and come out. Now you can see in the back there are a gray little blur coming around through the, uh, the brush. Uh, trapping with the drop trap isn't ideal because the peg comes straight at you and you can't always see if they're safely in underneath uh, the box before you lower it, but here he's good and we got him. Here's a mock-up of a strategy to get mom uh, when you didn't get her first and she's no longer willing to go into a trap. You can try a small kitten in a squirrel trap or a kitten trap inside a larger trap. This usually only works when mom's maternal hormones are still really strong. After eight, nine weeks old, uh, mom may not be willing to even go into a trap for her kittens, but it's worth a try. Here we're doing the reverse. We're using mom inside a trap under the drop trap as the bait to try and get the kitten uh, to come out. 
Uh, again, those shy kittens are really hard to get if you don't get them first. Sometimes, particularly if mom's stressed out, uh, she won't make a sound. And so, of course, the kitten's hiding in the den. It has no idea that mom's even out there. They do have some apps that you can use on your phone. It's an app of a mother cat calling to her kittens. And sometimes if the kitten hears the app, will come out and then see mom under the trap and then go in so then you can trap them. You can imagine that all these plan B fixes when things go wrong are very stressful on the cat that's inside the trap, either mom or kitten. So it's all the more reason to try and follow plan A and do the strategy so that you don't have to go to these uh, drastic measures. I hope this strategy will help you to have a successful trapping and make your work for cats a little easier. If you find our YouTube video presentations helpful, please like them and even subscribe to our channel. And please donate on Venmo or on Facebook or at urbancatleague.org. And if you have any questions, tips, or comments, uh, you can email them to us at urbancatleague at gmail.com.